like, comment, subscribe. Words that you're not likely to hear on this channel, uh, but also the title of Mark Bergen's 2022 book, uh, all about inside the world of YouTube's chaotic rise to world domination. Uh, Bergen started this book in 2019, finished it this year, or published this year, uh, the, kind of the tail end of our, of the pan of our pandemic times. Um, and, you know, ramping up to the next, the next American elections, uh, cycle. It's, it, uh, it takes us, takes you from 2005 when YouTube was founded, uh, all the way up until, yeah, until basically this, until this year. Uh, it, it takes you through, uh, on the public facing side, it takes you through sort of all the all the things that are publicly known about YouTube. Uh, it's early problems with copyright. Uh, there was a lawsuit with uh, Viacom that threatened to sort of take it down, take it down forever. Uh, dealing with, uh, uh, you know, kind of porn content. Those co copyright uh, stuff, uh, pornography were things that were fairly easy for uh, a machine run company like YouTube, that kind of uh, people who are like, let's engineer this, let's figure out a way that computers can handle the massive, massive volume of um, videos that get shared on this w video sharing website uh, every every second of every day uh, and is only growing, has, seems to be only growing larger and larger. You know, it also takes you through uh, you know, um, the really a lot of the unfortunate um, dark sides of YouTube, um, not only um, the sort of the nightmare fuel videos that uh, that they that YouTube struggles to figure out how to uh, get rid of and, you know, how people game the system to try and edge up to, you know, fetishizing children or stuff like that. And like, how, how are we supposed to kind of identify this content when um you know, not necessarily all the time human beings can agree on that. How do we engineer it so uh, the, a computer with given a set of instructions, the algorithm can decide on stuff like that, how they can decide on stuff like hate speech. So we get that. Uh, you know, we get the big celebrity fails of, of YouTube, uh, of Logan Paul, of PewDiePie. I mean, this is all stuff that I think if you've been kind of hanging around YouTube for long enough, you've probably heard about. This is kind of all gathered into one cohesive story. Where this book really stands out, I think, is that Bergen, a tech reporter, uh, interviewed uh, 300 people for this book. Uh, and of those, 160 of them are former or current employees of both YouTube and Google. Now, he didn't get any interviews with the higher-ups in either Google or um, or or YouTube. Uh, Susan Wojcicki, who is the CEO of uh, YouTube, did not sit down for an interview for this book. And indeed, uh, the, 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 the very higher-ups don't really feel the need to actually kind of answer to to uh, reporters and it's only I think when they get when they get uh, dragged in front of uh, Senate hearings and are grilled that we we actually get to see kind of the faces behind uh, this this these these giant giant monopolistic corporations so uh, it but it is valuable in the sense of we start you, you start seeing, YouTube, I mean, in, in one way, it's very obvious. YouTube is an ad selling site. There's, as TV is all about the commercials, that is what they are. That is the main product that they are actually selling to advertisers and uh, drawing our eyes in with the flashy pictures between the commercials. It's the commercials that are the important thing. And indeed, for uh, YouTube, uh, the existential challenges that it's had recently was stuff like Adpocalypse, where advertisers alarmed by a lot of questionable, terrible content on YouTube withdrew, and that got YouTube's in, uh, attention. Uh, for all the uh, difficulties and problems, very legitimate problems that many YouTubers have uh, on various spectrums with YouTube that don't get any attention, the second the money started pulling out, YouTube paid attention and paid attention hard, uh, often at times at the cost of those creators because YouTube is a corporation and needs to make that money and it needs to please, you know, that is, that is, it's the key thing, which, you know, is not surprising. It is a business. Now, the thing of it being a business that has got such, as it says, this is chaotic rise to world domination. 
it is the de facto sole um, company for sharing videos. There are others, but that is such a tiny laughable percentage of the eyeballs that uh, share videos, uh, long form videos on, 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 uh, in the world that, you know, and maybe I'm thinking, and maybe I'm being a bit too, um, kind of, uh, you know, uh, North American European focus there. I don't, I'm not quite sure where, um, you know, other other places uh, like China or places like that or India do, though. I mean, it, I know it is quite large and quite YouTube is quite large in India. I mean, it's staggering exactly just the scope of of YouTube's reach and uh, that this is truly a global business, which is which is one of the things that Bergen's actually able to w illuminate well is when they make policy decisions. This is a giant tanker of a company, like a super, super tanker. It's like the, the, the smallest mo motion that they make has gigantic ripples throughout uh, the entire world. Now, he also kind of makes the point that this is probably uh, as as a being one monolith. YouTube is one monolith is probably not going to be the case. Uh, it's as it gets more regulations from different countries, it's going to bifurcate into being kind of different experiences for people all over all over the world. And he probably already is in a lot of more repressive places. Uh, YouTube still runs in in Russia apparently at this point, uh, at least as I'm as I'm speaking here. I think. But so, I mean, that is probably where uh, it, it is. You get the kind of like their thinking, the, the corporation's thinking behind it. And you I really do get the sense of while there's a lot of like really well-meaning um, people who want to do good in the world uh, working at at YouTube, it is a corporation. And there is a certain kind of a structural thing of this monopoly where, you know, they they want to make money. They want government to leave them alone so they, they can make lots of money. And, um, you know, that I, I do think I do think what, you know, reading a book like that, that is that is the primary concern, which is not surprising. So, I mean, that's where, you know, I think a book like this is one of these things where you can just split off into so many things as as somebody who's, you know, like myself, spends a whole bunch of time on YouTube and really enjoys it, really I mean, I am a dabbler. I am not, I'm not obviously monetized or anything like that, but it's like, oh, this is just so fascinating to me um, as kind of my own little uh, uh, playground that uh, YouTube uh, lets me uh, be a little barnacle, tiny, tiny barnacle uh, underneath. But yeah, that whole thing of, you know, just the monopolistic nature of YouTube and, you know, as American company, I'm a Canadian. It's like, why are, why is this American company have such a kind of like, uh, shouldn't, shouldn't somebody regulate, but then again, who should regulate it? Do I want the Canadian government to regulate YouTube? Not particularly. Um, so that, that is, that is interesting thing. Cause I mean, it is, it is probably going to, is, you know, if it hasn't, you know, kid, child, kids do not watch regular TV anymore. It is an online thing. And that is, that is a giant amount of power uh, to give to uh, a single corporation. I mean, I would feel a lot better probably if there was uh, multiple uh, video sites. Of course, that would also diminish, you know, the kind of the, the amount that you can kind of find, find of um, common commonality on the thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but you know, there's, there's other things to talk about here. There's the whole thing of AI and how they're constantly tweaking the AI to try and weed out um, questionable, not, not, um, you know, stuff that is not ad friendly content uh, on the, on the site, how to, how to diminish it, how to flag it, how to um, reg, how to, how to regulate it. YouTube has definitely shifted over the years from a very hands-off company to realizing, oh, we need to make the advertisers happy to being much more, you know, regulation. And they've, they're very much is the focus of, um, putting this in the hands of, uh, of a computer with instructions and trying to tweak those instructions and understandably kind of keeping that stuff secret because, 
Uh, there are plenty of people, whether it's for, for money purposes or for uh, really negative purposes, who want to, to, to exploit, out, uh, exploit those instructions and find loopholes and find ways of just edging up to the line. So YouTube, in one sense, is being very understandably cagey with that stuff, because the second it's known what the rule is, it's like, oh, well, then we can get around it this way versus if you, if you keep it quiet. I mean, I was also struck in the sense that, you know, YouTube is in internet, in internet lingo, as a company that started in 2005, really old. But there is another sense of like, you think, oh, YouTube is probably not the future. This is very much, this is, this is the, the, this is it at its, it's, it's perhaps its pinnacle, but you can see very, how very easily things could just suddenly shift. I mean, a part of the chaotic nature of YouTube is it just trying desperately to pivot from one thing to another thing and, and just making it and just making it. Uh, and there's going to be at some point where it just won't pivot. And I mean, it is a, such a giant company. Uh, it is, it reminds me of something like IBM back in the day. Uh, that used to be the major computer company um, back in like, you know, I think the sixties and maybe into, into the seventies, the major, the major business, uh, computer company, but, uh, it was slow and, uh, a bunch of little upstarts, um, Microsoft and Apple came along and ate its lunch completely. And our, you know, that was the blue chip, that was the blue chip company. And I, I don't know where IBM is today. What is, what is IBM doing nowadays? And I, I do think reading a book like this, you think, oh, okay. YouTube is, is sort of, it's the IBM of, of, of today, but I can see, I, I really get the sense of like, oh, this isn't going to last. So I guess I should just enjoy it. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting look, reading that book. And in some ways that is a good news story uh, for as much as uh, I'm sure it's going to at some point collapse and people will jump off the ship and this giant super tanker will sink. And I'll probably be sad at the time. I've spent many, many hours. I will probably like the rest of us just go on to the next thing. Um, will it be any better? Will it be any less monopolistic? Probably not. I mean, if Mark Zuckerberg has his way, we'll all be living in the metaverse and uh, that will probably all be owned by him. And that's, I mean, you, it's, it's choosing, choosing your giant megalomaniacal mega uh, billionaires, you know, the ones that are, are really trying to do something good or the ones who just want to make a lot of money and control everything. <laughs> Um, you know, so yeah, those are my, my chaotic thoughts on like, comment, subscribe, and uh, don't feel like you need to do any of those things. <laughs> All right. More videos later.